It's leather patch time again. Hello, I'm Brigham, and today on the Friday Forge, we're going to be using this little piece of leather to make these little pieces of leather. I made a video like this before, you can check the description, but I'm hoping to be a bit more concise in this one. So I start with my sheet of leather. This is veg tan leather. You can get a sheet from Michaels or Hobby Lobby. It's a little pricey, but depending on the size of your patch, you can get a good number of patches out of one sheet. On this one, I'm actually able to get six out of this scrap. Next, get your stain and dilute it as much as you would like. Uh, obviously, the more you dilute, the lighter it'll be. If it's too light, you can always wait for it to dry, then do another round of stain. For this one, I did two to one. If I'm being honest, this process can be a little bit tedious. It's fun and allows you to tweak the color of your leather until it's exactly what you want. But in the future, I'll just order the leather pre-stained or pre-dyed. It just simplifies your project. Make sure you let it dry before the next step here. Before we put this into the Glowforge, we need to put masking on it. This does a couple things. One, it protects the leather from the burning residue that just happens when you engrave and cut with a laser. And two, it provides perfect masking lines for when we paint it later. You'll see what I mean when we get to that. Now, you really wanna make sure the masking is sticking well. I'm just using a scrap piece of wood with a straight side to really press it down. If it's not stuck down good enough, when the laser cuts it, the masking will peel up and start on fire. As you can imagine, that's not great. It makes more smoke in your Glowforge and singes the nice surface of your leather. So really, make sure it's stuck down. When you go to put this in your Glowforge, you'll inevitably need to clean it because you're doing a video and you're embarrassed of how dirty it is. I first just dust it off with a cloth, then I get out the isopropyl alcohol and wipe the whole thing down. There are plenty of really good cleaning videos out there, but I just want to mention to clean the laser lenses and mirrors because I did not do that in this video and believe it or not, the laser didn't cut all the way through like it normally would have. So keep that in mind. Finally, I can put the leather in the Glowforge. I have these cool little tab things that stick into the honeycomb tray and hold the leather down on the edges. You could use magnets as well if you have them. The tray is metal, so it can stick through the leather to the metal tray. Next, we get the design sorted out. I use Silhouette Studio. It's software for a vinyl cutter my wife, Jen, has had for some time. So I'm more familiar with that software than anything else. But it has the ability to save a design file as SVG, which is the file type laser cutters use. You gotta have the paid version of the software to be able to do that though. So if you're looking for a free way to save your design as SVG, then I know a lot of people use Inkscape. Adobe Illustrator is another one, but again, that's a paid program. I don't have any experience in either of those, but I might try them out in the future. One thing to note when you're making a laser design, at least for the Glowforge, is that the line color matters. So where I want it to cut, I'm making it one color, and where I want it to score, another color, and lastly, where I want it to engrave, another color different from the other two. And I save it as an SVG. 
You then upload it to the Glowforge software. Obviously, I want to be as efficient as I can with my leather piece, and it turns out I could fit a sixth patch on here, so why not? And let's print it. Before we take the masking off, we want to take advantage of these perfectly masked lines here. So use a brush of some kind, I use an old toothbrush, and try to get as much soot out of the engraved areas as you can. This will allow the paint to adhere better. I use these paints by Angelus. They're leather paints. I think originally they were made to be able to paint on shoes. Um, they're super durable. But since we masked before we engraved, even someone as unskilled in art as myself can paint the engraved portions without fear of messing it up. You can see that I just used the plain green here, but there's a portion of the design that's a lighter green color, so I just added some yellow until I got the color looking the way that I want it. And after that first coat was dry, I did do a second coat. Oh yeah, that is looking so sharp already, but we're not quite done.
When I spray the sealer, I like to stick the patches down with masking tape just because the air from the sprayer tends to be strong enough to blow them onto the ground. I use this finisher from the same brand as the leather paints I have. The sheen is satin, but they also sell a duller that you can mix with it if you want a more matte finish. I like the satin. I like to use an HVLP gun to apply the finisher. This is a cheap one from Harbor Freight that does the job just fine. Of course, you'll need an air compressor, but because we're spraying such a small amount of sealer, even the smallest air compressor will work. Just make sure your regulator is set to the proper PSI. I'm keeping mine crazy low, like almost at zero, but this gun is much bigger than I need. If you had an airbrush, I think that would be a much more appropriate tool for spraying this stuff on. But this is what I have. And there it is. Those are looking great. Once you have the patches to this point, they're ready to attach the hats. You can check out the other video if you want to see how I do that with contact cement. I'll leave a link with a timestamp in the description. Another option that is pretty cool that the client is going to do with these patches is attach them with Velcro. That way, he can stick them to his hats as well as his shirts, and replacing them will be super easy. Thank you for sticking around to the end. Liking and subscribing is super appreciated. We'll see you next time.